Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at equilibrium in moments, so we can answer questions from exercise 4c. So what we're meaning by equilibrium is that the balancing beam is not going to be rotating in any direction, uh, so all of the forces and all of the moments kind of balance out with each other, which is great. And what you're going to be asked to do is find an unknown value, or an unknown quantity within that equation. Uh, so for example here, this uh, pivot balancing act here is in equilibrium because we can clearly see here that the anti-clockwise moments will balance out with the clockwise moments. They're both 40, so this um, model here is in equilibrium. Okay. Now, uh, something else that you're going to have to get used to with your diagrams is that when a beam is supported by a pivot, there is a reaction force between the pivot and the beam. This is the upwards force of the pivot onto the beam. It's effectively the opposite force of the beam onto the pivot. So some weight is going to be acting downwards onto the pivot. This is the pivot's reaction back upwards um, to keep the beam supported. So this force here is the force that the, the pivot has to provide to the beam to keep the beam supported. Uh, this is also the case when the beam is attached to two pieces of string, or maybe just even one piece of string. But in that case, we're not going to be calling it R forces or for reaction, we're going to be calling it tensions in the string. So you're either going to be asked one of two different types of questions. One where you've got balancing points or pivot points, in which case you have a reaction force um, vertically upwards at those points, or you have a beam that's attached to two pieces of string where there are tension in both of those strings and all of the mass transfers from one model to the other model. Um, it's just a different picture that you're going to draw uh, with no balances underneath. Okay, so math stays the same, different scenarios can occur though. And the main maths that we're going to be using when we're in equilibrium is to use one of two strategies, or maybe both the strategies if we have simultaneous equations. Strategy number one is that upwards forces must equal downwards forces. And strategy number two is that clockwise moments must balance out with anti-clockwise moments from whatever point you take a moment from. It's up to you where you take the moment from. We're going to give you some advice into where you should take those moments from. But if you decide to go with a different strategy, it should work as well. So let's keeping these uh, keeping these two strategies in mind. Let's get started on the question then. So the diagram to the right shows a uniform rod of length three meters, and the rod weighs twenty newtons, and it rests uh, horizontally on the supports of A and C where A to C is two metres. So we've got two uh, pivot points here, and effectively what you can think of it as is setting up a model where you've got one pencil and another pencil resting your ruler on top of there. Um, that's effectively what we've got happening here. Uh, the, the uniform rodness of it, when the, when the question says that the, the rod is uniform, what that means is that the weight of your rod is going to be placed exactly in the center of the rod. So there's going to be a 1.5 distance from one end to your center of mass and 1.5 distance from the other end to your center of mass as well. So when you see the word uniform rod and the fact that the rod weighs something, um, you're going to put that onto your diagram as having a force at the center of your rod um, of 20 newtons in this case, or however much the rod weighs. Okay, and now we can get started on the question. The question is, calculate the magnitude of the normal reactions at both of the supports. So that's the R forces that I was talking about earlier. These forces here might not be the same. In fact, I'm tempted to say that the reaction force at C is going to be bigger than the reaction force at A because the center of mass of the uh, rod here is closer to point C, so C is probably going to be taking more of the weight than the pivot point A. But let's show it mathematically. So first strategy, upwards forces must equal downwards forces. We have two upwards forces and they're both the reactions of the pivot points. We call them RA and RC. So what I would write in the exam is that I am resolving the forces in the upward and downward direction 
to make the equation Ra plus Rc equals 20. And then my second strategy is to calculate moments. Now where should I take a moment from? It's always quite useful to take a moment from a pivot point. In this case, let's take the moment from pivot point C. So we're going to have some anti-clockwise moments and some clockwise moments. And because they're in equilibrium, the two should balance out and we'll just put the forces or the moments on the correct side. So let's take moments about C. And this is what I would write in an exam. And it's really clear for the examiner and for yourself when you come back and check your work, what you've done in this question. You've taken a moment about C and the equation is as follows. So let's consider the two forces that we've got here and here. Let's consider this force here first. We here have got a um, force of RA two meters away from the pivot point. And if we were to imagine the clock around this pivot point here, it's going upwards on the left-hand side of the clock. So that's going to be going in the clockwise direction. So on the clockwise side of my equation, I'm going to have two times RA. And for the other pivot point, so and for the other force, we're going to have a distance of 0.5 times a force of 20. And if we can imagine the clock, it's going now downwards on the left hand side of the clock. So then that's going to take it in the anti clockwise direction. So you're going to have on the anti clockwise side of your equation 0.5 times 20, just like that. And now down below here, we've got an equation to solve, and we then could work out RC following on from that. So half of 20 is 10, and divide that by 2, we get 5. And then plugging that back into the top equation there, we're going to get RC is 15. So those are our answers there. And we were right in our suspicion that RC would be providing more of the, um, would be providing more of, uh, would be supporting more of the weight of this 20 Newton uh, beam, um, 15 Newtons and 5 Newtons. All right then, so another question then. Let's go for this one here. A uniform beam, and remember as soon as you hear that word uniform, you're thinking that the center of mass of my object, however much the beam weighs, is going to be modeled as a force in the center of my beam. Uh, a uniform beam of mass 40 kilograms, that is a, that is a pretty heavy beam, uh, of length 5 meters, rests horizontally on supports at C and D, where A to C and D to B are one meter between uh, A and B. Now, when a man of 80 kilograms stands on the beam at E, the magnitude of the reaction at D is double the reaction at C. By modeling the beam as a rod and the man as a particle, find the distance A to E. Okay, so let's start to get stuck into this question then. So we have a beam of distance 5 metres, and we know that the pivot points are both 1 metre from each end. So let's first add that onto our diagram. We also know that the beam is a uniform beam, which means that the mass of the beam, which is 40 kilograms, um, is going to be modelled in the centre of that rod. And notice here how the force of this uh, point here is going to be 40 times g. So remember that the, if the mass is um, if the mass is forty and using F equals m a, the force is going to be equal to forty, and then the acceleration here is going to be the acceleration due to gravity, which is forty times g. So in this case here, if you're given a mass, make sure that you add it onto your diagram as a force of of force forty g. Okay, and then uh, we also know it's in directing in the centre, so we can put in some more units and some more uh, distance measurements to help us out there. Okay, um, we also now know, let me just rub out this, uh, this bit of working up here. We also now know that the reaction forces are going to be at both of the pivots. Okay, so reaction forces at both pivots, but we know something about the reaction forces as well. We know that the reaction force at D is going to be double the reaction force at C. So that means if I take the reaction force at C, let's call it RC, and double it, that's going to be the reaction force at D. So D is going to have a reaction force of 2RC. 
And the only other thing I need to add on to my diagram now is the man who has a mass of 80 kilograms, or is going to have a force of 80 g newtons, uh, stands at point E, given this diagram here. Now, I know that I have more reaction force here, effectively pivot D is supporting more of the weight of the um, beam and the man, so I'm assuming here that my man is going to be standing somewhere in on the right-hand side of my rod here. So let's place the man at point E here. And I don't know where he's standing, that's the question that I need to work out. So at some point I'll introduce a letter X as a distance, but it depends where I take the pivot point from. Okay, so let's start the question now. Let's use our first strategy of upwards forces equals downwards forces. So we're going to have the upwards force of RC and 2RC balance out with the force of 40G and 80G. So we're going to have here effectively 3RC equals 120g, so therefore the force at pivot point C is 40g, and the pivot at D is going to have a reaction force of 80g. So I can replace those on my diagram with those forces. And now I can take a moment about a certain point. And in this question here, we're working out the distance from A to E, so we might as well set A as the value of the pivot as the value of, as the point at which we're going to take moments about. So in this case here, we've got four forces that we're going to have to add onto our diagram. And because the forces, because the beam is in equilibrium, there are going to probably be two forces on the clockwise side and two forces on the anti-clockwise side. And imagine that at point A, you've got your clock and you're going to be deciding upon which direction each of these pivot points are going to be going around your clock as well. That's important to the question as well. So in my notes, I'll write taking a moment with a capital M and then in brackets A, because that's the point at which I'm taking a moment about, is defined by the equation. So the first force I'm going to take is this 40 G force here. That's one meter away. And if I bring back my clock, that's going upward on the right hand side of the clock in the anti-clockwise direction. So I'm going to have 1 times 40g on the anti-clockwise side. Moving on to the next force, I'm going to have this distance here of 2.5 times 40g, and that's going to be going downwards on the right-hand side of my clock in the clockwise direction. So the calculation there is going to be 2.5 times 40g on the clockwise side of the equation. Moving on to the next force, we're going to call the length from A to E the value and what we're going to do is then work out the value of x. So this distance here is going to be x times a force of 80g. That's also going to be going downwards on the right-hand side of my clock. So it's going to be a calculation of x for distance times 80g, which is the force at that point. And the final one is this 80g force here that's going upward on the right-hand side of the clock, therefore anti-clockwise direction, so another force on the right-hand side, at a distance of 4 metres times 80g newtons, so that's going to be 4 times 80g. Simplify your algebra, so group like terms together, you can cancel out g's at this point as well, minus 100, divide by 80, and you get x is 3.25, which does kind of make sense, 2.5 metres to the centre, therefore um, 75 centimetres on from that point is where the man is going to be standing. Lovely, so there we are. That's the answer to this question here then. So your turn to have a go at this question here. Pause the video, make sure you draw a really nice clear diagram, and have a go at the question. Right then, let's get on with this question then. So the first thing I need to do in this question is to draw out my lovely diagram. I'm going to have some tensions in the string at A and tension in the string at C. I'm going to have a uniform rod of mass 60 kilograms, so a weight of 60 G newtons needs to go on there. It's uniform, so that means it's exactly in the middle of my rod which weigh, which has a total length of 5, so I'm cutting that in half to 2.5. And it also has a load of 40 G newtons 
at the point B. This is the point B, this is the point A, this is my midpoint, and this is the point C. So there's my diagram. Now, what I can also do on my diagram is I can include this piece of information here. The tension in the wire at C is four times the tension in the wire at A. So instead of writing TC here, I'm going to take the tension at A, times it by four, and then that's going to be um, my tension at C. Now the first thing I need to do here is to work out the tension in the wire at C. So in this case here, what I can do is I can work out uh, using strategy number one is that upwards forces must equal downwards forces. And I'm going to be resolving up and down. Therefore, five lots of tension at A will balance out with the forces going downwards of 100 G. So therefore TA is 20 G Newtons and TC is uh, 80 G Newtons. So I'll rub those out, 20 G and 80 G. Okay, and that's my answer to part A then. Part B is to now work out the distance from C to B. So we'll give this a value of X. Now the first time I tried this I took moments from C, but in fact, in fact I think the easiest way of doing this is to take moments from B. Now we're only going to actually be considering three of the forces when we take moments from B because this 40g newton force here has a distance of zero away from the pivot point, so therefore the moment of this force here is going to be zero, because remember that moment is calculated by distance times force. So in that case, for this question here, I'm going to be ignoring that 40g force there because it has a distance of zero away from where I'm taking my moments from. So taking moments about b, I'm looking for it to be in equilibrium, so therefore anti-clockwise will balance out with clockwise forces. So let's now get started. I'm looking at this force here, number one, this force here, number two, and this force here, number three. The first force has a distance 5 and a force of 20 G Newtons, and when we consider the clock at centre B, it's going upwards on the left hand side, which means that it's going in the clockwise direction. So the first moment I'm going to be adding onto my diagram is a moment of 100 G in the clockwise direction. The next force I'm going to be taking into account is this 60 G Newton force here. That has a distance of 2.5 and it's going to be going downwards on the left hand side of the clock so that's going to make it an anti-clockwise moment. So 2.5 times 60 is going to give it a total moment of 150 G. And the last one to take into account is this 80 G Newton force here of a distance x away from b. If we look at the direction of the moment as well, that's going to be going in the clockwise direction. So on the side of the clockwise moment, I'm going to have a calculation of x times 80g. So once we've cancelled out all the g's, we can just say this is equal to um, 50, because we're taking the 100 over to the other side, equals 80 times x, cancelling out the zeros, this is going to be 5 eighths equals x, and we can calculate that as a decimal, 5 eighths is the same as 0 0.625 metres, so the distance of, from C to B has a distance of 0 0.625 metres. Lovely, great, so that's how we answer that question there then. So have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 4C. These are uniform rods, um, and where you are um, using the two strategies of upwards forces equals downwards forces, and clockwise moments equal anti-clockwise moments from any point uh, that you take your pivot from. All right then, thanks very much for watching.